Take a mighty sailing man, throw in a skipper who's brave and sure, mixed with a millionaire and his wife, a glamorous movie star, a resourceful professor, and a naive girl from a small town in Kansas. Add a dash of Robinson Crusoe, and what do you get? The recipe for Gilligan's Island. Ahoy, mates. I'm Alan Hale, Jr., and I'm your host for the Superstation Remembers Gilligan's Island. You know that shipwrecks have always fascinated people. The Spanish Armada, the Titanic, the Andrea Doria, to name a few. But to TV viewers everywhere, no shipwreck was of more interest than that of the SS Minnow. <laughs> Gilligan's Island debuted on Saturday night, September 26, 1964, to almost universal critical acclaim. Variety called the show a masterpiece of banality. UPI said, it is impossible that a more inept moronic or humorless show has ever appeared on the tube. And the Detroit News said, the worst news show that... Oh, come on. What did they know, anyway? <laughs> Gilligan's Island was created by Sherwood Schwartz, an Emmy Award-winning writer for his work on the Red Skelton Show. To him, each episode was not merely a farce, but a real life-or-death struggle. Would the castaways survive? Would they be rescued? Would Thurston Howell III three-putt another hole? The bumbling Gilligan was portrayed by Bob Denver, who many of you remember as Maynard G. Krebs, TV's first true hippie in the long-running series, Dobie Gillis. Millionaire Thurston Howell III was brought to life by Jim Backus, a popular comedian on radio, stage, and screen, who is probably best remembered as the voice of the myopic Mr. Magoo, or as James Dean's father in Rebel Without a Cause. It was Jim's eyebrow acting, scowl, and nasty snicker that made Mr. Howell who he was. A millionaire who snobbishly insisted on carrying on all social amenities despite being shipwrecked on a desert isle. <laughs> Natalie Schaefer, Lovey Howell, got her start on Broadway in such productions as Lady in the Dark, Susan and the Girls, and Doe Girls. It was in Doe Girls that Natalie first garnered attention in Hollywood, and she was soon working regularly in some of the most popular films and TV shows around. Playing the role of beautiful motion picture star Ginger Grant was not difficult for Tina Louise. A former model and nightclub singer, Tina came to Hollywood after a success in Broadway's Lil Abner and arrived on the set of Gilligan's Island after amassing a string of impressive movie credits, which included pivotal roles in God's Little Acre and The Hangman. As played by Russell Johnson, the professor was a real asset to the castaways. Among his many creations were cups made from coconuts, silverware from bamboo, and lipstick for ginger distilled from raspberries. <laughs> when Russell joined our cast, he had already made quite a name for himself in Hollywood for his work in such films as The Greatest Story Ever Told, This Island Earth, and his numerous TV appearances, which included a co-starring role as Marshal Jib Scott in the series Black Saddle. And then there was Mary Ann. A former Miss Nevada and Miss America finalist, Dawn Wells portrayed Mary Ann using her very own blend of all-American wholesome beauty and freshness. I was the skipper, the leader of this merry band of castaways. As the captain of the Dune Minnow, I was no match for the elements, nor my first and only mate, Gilligan. My route to Gilligan's Island began early. I was no stranger to show business as my father, Alan Sr., the original Hale was familiar to two generations of moviegoers, many of the times as Errol Flynn's sidekick in a number of classics. I made my movie debut before I went to high school, and later on went to star in the series Biff Baker USA and Casey Jones. Just sit right back and stay anchored to your sets, because we'll be right back with the very first tale of the Minnow's fateful trip. series is always very important. It sets the stage for what follows. In Two and a Raft, the audience was introduced to the seven castaways, their backgrounds, their personalities, and their quirks. Pay careful attention, because this episode was the first and only time that the skipper and the professor's real names were ever mentioned. Food seemed to be the only thing on my little buddy's mind. Come to think of it, the local shark population was looking for an appetizer, too. <laughs> Fortunately, the premiere left the audience hungry for more escapades from Gilligan's Island. In this episode, up at bat, a stray coconut sets the ball rolling. And in typical fashion, Gilligan soon drives everyone batty when he becomes a real pain in the neck. <laughs> when we return, we'll see another of my favorite Gilligan's Island misadventures. <laughs>
In one of our funniest episodes, a confused Japanese sailor who doesn't know that World War II is over lands on the island in a one-man submarine. The result? The castaways go to camp. Prison camp. And what follows is pure escapist fantasy and so sorry, my iron now. <laughs> For three seasons, the castaways all struggled to survive without the things they wanted most. For the skipper and Gilligan, it was life on the high seas with a new charter boat. For the Howells, it was money and an exclusive country club. High society with all its trappings and Harvard beating the tar out of Yale. <laughs> Ginger? She missed the bright lights of Broadway and Hollywood and a legion of adoring fans. The professor longed for a return to the academia and an opportunity to continue working on his book, Rust, the Real Red Menace. Away from home for the first time, Marianne wished for the normalcy of small town life and a chance to read those romance stories that she dearly loved. The primary reason for the show's continued success lies in the diversity of the characters. Each one represents a different segment of society. People so familiar that anyone who watches the show can identify with someone on the screen. Did we ever get off the island? Well, yes and no. During the show's regular run of 98 episodes, most of our rescue attempts were ruined by Gilligan. But 11 years after our cancellation, our rescue from Gilligan's Island was arranged. Since its premiere in 1964, Gilligan's Island has remained one of TV's most endearing and entertaining comedy classics. Fans all over the world continue to sink into their armchairs and laugh as Gilligan foils the castaways' attempts to return to civilization. And people will continue to laugh, because like the castaways, who are stranded on a tropical island nest, Gilligan's Island will be around for a long, long time. I'm Alan Hale, Jr. Aloha!